That's wild. And I think I know where that is. Mayor Eric Adams announcing sweeping budget cuts to make up the billions being spent on migrants. New York City is carrying the weight of a national problem. This could affect schools, create larger class sizes, increase emergency service wait time. This issue will destroy New York City. An urgent message from New York City Mayor Eric Adams as the number of migrants who have arrived in the city since last April hits 110,000. The influx has strained resources with Mayor Adams estimating the crisis could cost potentially $12 billion over the next three years. It looks like they fixed it. To help counter that, he's asking every city agency to reduce spending by up to 15% in the coming months. Is this a way to put pressure on New York State and the federal government? We've done more than our share. Uh, over 110,000 uh, migrants have arrived in the city, 60,000 still remaining in, in our care. Think about that for a moment. Okay, 110,000 asylum seekers. That's a massive strain on New York City's resources. And in order to effectively manage that, the city has to find money and, and they're gonna have to get it somewhere. They're gonna need it fast. First, we need to go over what sacrifices New Yorkers are gonna have to make. And second, we're gonna discuss whether or not we New Yorkers deserve this because of our right to shelter laws. This could affect schools, create larger class sizes, increase emergency service wait time. The cuts are also targeting police and firefighters, telling them to cut overtime costs. 15% cutbacks from every agency. Education, emergency services, police, fire, education. Wait, I said education. I meant libraries. Critics are saying these types of cuts are unsustainable and that New York will literally start falling apart underneath us. These efficiencies are going to come from communities that are already struggling. This is wrong for the migrants to go through this and it's wrong for long-standing New Yorkers that are struggling to go through this. It almost sounds like the mayor doesn't want to do this, but he's going to have to. Everybody who's in New York City is going to feel this in some way. It's a no-win situation. You can't have people sleeping on the street but the money's got to come from somewhere. But you've got hundreds of thousands of people who have come to New York City. They need a place to stay. They need food. They need shelter. Does New York City deserve this? That's the eternal question. Some people are saying yes, some people are saying no, but let's hear how the mayor answers this one. New York City is a sanctuary city, and this migrant crisis comes with that territory. What do you say to those who think you relinquish your right to complain about the stresses it places on your city because of that? No one who created this a decade ago uh, took into account that we were talking about hundreds of thousands of people potentially coming to coming to the city. So it seems the mayor thinks that this rule is contributing to the problem, but not in the way that it was originally intended in 1981 when this whole thing took place and became a rule. And anything set in stone back in 1981 was done so in the context of current immigration rules and policies, not the policies and rules of 2023. But either way, the city is going to have to make some sacrifices. And the question is, how bad will those be? Is every department of the city going to have to make cuts? Are New Yorkers going to suffer? Will no one notice? Although there's some debate about the answers to those questions, there is one part of New York that's probably going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Riding the subway is slow and steadily getting safer, according to NYPD crime statistics. So the subway's getting safer, but what happens when we start making cuts? What happens when we take money out of this system? But those gains have been built on the backs of cops primarily working overtime. It's something the city may soon not be able to afford, much to the dismay of Brooklyn strap hanger Greya Glover. I love seeing the cops because that's for our protection. This station booth is already unmanned at this point. Do you think that if they cut money from the subway system, it's gonna get better or it's gonna get worse? I don't think so. It's like so? worse. Pretty worse, yeah. How have you man. felt over the last six months? Do you feel like things are better this year than they were last year? That's what a lot of people are saying. A lot worse, it's hard to survive here in New York. Look at the rent, the rent's too high. You, know, you can barely make it. We don't need one more thing, do we? Yeah. We don't need one more thing. So earlier this year, the city of New York made it a priority to increase safety in the subway system. There were more police patrolling the various subway platforms, more police on cars, and this was to combat things like fare evasion and knife-related crime, all of which had been a problem in the subway leading up until that point, and things had been 
improving. Apparently all the progress was achieved through the use of overtime spending on law enforcement. And that means the city didn't hire more police officers, they just paid extra to have their current force do more work. And that means that the current level of policing that brought crime down in the actual subway was always meant to be a temporary thing. Last year, New York City paid out $2.4 billion in overtime, most of which went to uniform city workers like NYPD officers, firefighters, sanitation workers, and correction officers. Okay, $2.4 billion in overtime. That is insane. That's like a small country. It had been working, though. It was effective. And now that things are going to get cut below where we were before that even started, oh, man, it doesn't bode well. And look at this. Just the other day, a bunch of windows were broken on subway cars, causing about $500 thousand dollars worth of damage and the real scary thing is that these cuts are about to take place right before most new yorkers have to rely on the subway as their sole means of transportation because it's about to be winter time when it's really cold i ride a bike when i can because it's way better than taking the train but not when it's 40 degrees or below out but if you think taking money out of the subways allows the idea wait until you hear what new york city's other plans are not just tackling overtime like the money used recently to do extra garbage pickup. The city is spending around 107 billion total this fiscal year. Okay, I don't think anyone is enthusiastic about the idea of garbage pickup and waste removal being affected by this. Trash pickup here is already a disaster. We're a city of people that just throws stuff in the street. And Department of Sanitation, they've got a tough job, man. There's stuff everywhere. And they're fighting a never-ending battle. Are we really gonna see more of this? We're also in Tribeca slash Soho right now. This is an area of town with high-end boutiques, and the trash cans are still over full. Now look, I get it. Trash on the streets of New York, that's nothing new. It's an old, dirty city. It's always been that way. That's kind of what makes it cool. But we pay so much to live here, so much rent. Do we really want it to get worse? Not... Not really. Hardest hit may be city schools, which get more than $31 billion a year. Parents told us their children's classrooms are already getting squeezed. We've already had to combine classrooms. Um, there's a shortage of teachers. If you cut education, then that means that kids in New York have to suffer for the bad decisions of adults in New York. That's not fair. are also targeting police and firefighters, telling them to cut overtime costs. The union representing NYPD officers sending us a statement a short time ago warning that this will be impossible unless the city hires more officers. So why doesn't the city just hire more police? Why don't they just go and do that and pay them the normal rate? That way you'd have more resources. But the city also announcing a hiring freeze. One council member warning today that things could get worse before they get better. Oh, a hiring freeze. Okay, that's the reason. Every Every service in this city is going to be impacted. It sounds like what the mayor is saying is that if the city is responsible for providing it, it's probably going to get cut. So is there anything that the city can do other than cut services to fix this? There might be, but it might be even worse. on the state level is to increase taxes on the top 5% of New Yorkers to help pay for homeless and migrant services. Some people are going to be in favor of this, others aren't. I tried to look up how much money you need to make to be in the top 5% of New Yorkers, and I found that for New York State, that's around like $550,000. Yo, what the heck? They can't even keep this brand new nice park clean. The cuts haven't even happened yet. This New York Post article talks about how the budget for New York is over $100 million. Excuse me, $111 billion. And New York City taxpayers only make up about $80 billion of that. Which basically means that New York City was already treading water before any of these crises came upon it. And the last time New York City cut spending was in 2008 after the financial crisis. And currently New York City spent 
spending is up 11% over where it was two years ago. And if that goes down by 15%, the city will basically be back where it was recently. And I'm no politician, I'm no policymaker, but apparently you just can't go hacking up city budgets like you can your own personal budget if you realize that you're broke and then you start canceling things like Spotify and YouTube Premium. Wait, don't cancel YouTube Premium. You should sign up for YouTube Premium. Apparently a lot of stuff in the budget is untouchable, like pensions for people that used to work for the city and state. You can't mess with those. Those cost the city $30 billion. And what that basically means is the only way for New York to get money is to take it from the things we talked about earlier fire police education parks like this one sanitation you know the stuff that we need use and enjoy as we go about our daily lives here in the city which basically means that tax increases are the only way the city can get out of this tax increases and spending cuts which means it'll be less fun to live here and it'll cost more at the same time for some people other proposals include expanding the right to shelter mandates so that every county in new york is required to house migrants it's a great idea but the governor already said no the city's already tried for asylum seekers to live outside of new york and they've even made arrangements with private companies to house asylum seekers but those local localities have blocked that they shut it down they sued emergency orders and the governor's been pretty pretty firm on not allowing this to happen in other parts of the state at all. And even though this issue is happening in New York State, New York City is pretty much alone in its position on this, how it's being handled. They're not getting any help from anywhere else in the state, which is why they have to look internally to find the money to deal with this somehow. Now, one of the things the city is doing is they're actually suing these surrounding counties that blocked asylum seekers. But what do you think the city should do? Should they tax us more? Should they cut more? Should they do both? And if they do both, Will people continue to come to New York? Will people leave New York? Let me know if I missed anything. I'll see you in the next video.